Hello friends, hello, hello, welcome. I am Angie McPherson. I am a branding photographer, a marketing strategist, and a hype woman for creative entrepreneurs, helping them to grow their business and elevate their personal brand. And today I'm bringing back my weekly Instagram Live Q&A. So if you're here live, hello. If you're watching the replay, hello. I used to do these every week. Um, and then full disclosure, Life got crazy in 2021. Is that the year win? Yeah, 2021. Um, if you're new around here or haven't seen my updates, I was recently diagnosed with early stage breast cancer in February. And um, I undergoed multiple surgeries. Right now I'm going through chemotherapy. Literally had chemotherapy this morning. <laughs> and now I'm here to bring you my weekly Q&A because I am slowly getting back to business and getting back to shooting and um, showing up and helping you all with my lives and emails and social media uh, to grow your business and also uh, bringing back my courses this summer. So if you're new around here or if you haven't seen uh, the updates in a while, that's my story as we are today. So here I'm showing up and we're talking business. We're talking marketing, we're talking photography, we're talking uh, branding photography, product photography, we're talking building a business, entrepreneurship. We can talk about mompreneurship, mom life, all that good stuff. I have some good questions in the queue. If you're here live, drop them below and I will go and get to them. Hello, friends. Okay, I'm gonna bring up the questions here. Let's see. All right, here's our first question. There we go. Have you considered expanding your branding photos to other professionals? So this is a great question. And I reached out to her to clarify, you know, what type of other professionals, because I, you know, I work with a lot of creative entrepreneurs, of course, and she was asking about more business professionals. So business executives, corporates, you know, even realtors. And so I love this question. I work with all types of creative entrepreneurs and I work with business professionals as well. So if you are a branding photographer, there are so many other types of people you can work with. And if you are an entrepreneur or a business professional, branding uh, photography is for you. <laughs> It'll help you build your brand. So there's so many types, like I said, you could be working with creative entrepreneurs, service business, uh, service, you know, business owners, brick and mortar shops. You can work with product makers. I love working with product makers. I have like five to 10 Amazon boxes <laughs> behind me right now because I have an ongoing Amazon realtor that I, realtor Amazon <laughs> retailer that I work with on a monthly basis for about a year now, and she sends her products to my house. I photograph them, and she puts them up on Amazon. You know, so um, there's so many different types of entrepreneurs that you can be working with, and there's so many different types of business professionals. I also work with corporate companies. So one of my favorite things to do is shoot headshots for you know people who have a team. So like. Uh, staff members. I've worked with doctor's offices who had like dentists that needed new S shots. And those are so fun and easy because you literally go there, you bring your setup, you bring your lighting and everyone just walks through assembly line, assembly line, gets their pictures taken and leave. <laughs> so like I said, if you are a photographer who's already shooting brands and entrepreneurs and businesses, or if you're someone looking to get into this field, the amount of people you can work with is endless and they're all already in your network you go to different businesses you buy from different businesses you know you know so many other entrepreneurs because we are entrepreneurs so just giving you a little bit of motivation there to work with uh whoever you want to that um really lines with you know the type of client that you're looking for um hello everyone who's joining hey kathy <laughs> hello hello hey tracy Awesome. Okay. If you have any questions while you're here live, just drop them right here in the chat or click the question mark button at the bottom and I will get to you. Pulling up a new question now. Ooh, this is a good one. Do you use Flowdesk to send emails or just design them? I love Flowdesk. Oh my gosh. I had used MailChimp for probably six to seven years and MailChimp is fine. You know, every other email platform works it does a job but i transitioned to flowdesk about two years ago they were in beta i think they might still be in beta and it's just so pretty um so i love that the question says do you send emails or just design them because you can design them in flowdesk so most email providers it's just you know they'll let you add a photo they'll let you add text maybe a little button to click to a link but flowdesk is so pretty and i think i love it because it looks 
like a blog. So anytime I am sending an email, I'm able to add in my logo, my photos. They have pre-designed templates that you can use if you're doing like, um, you know, some updates, a newsletter. They have like a template that you can put in some photos and, and smaller font. They have buttons. You can do PDFs and opt-ins. If you're an entrepreneur building your email list, get an opt-in. Make an opt-in. An opt-in's called, you know, an opt-in, a freebie, a lead magnet, something to exchange for your ideal client's email address. So instead of just saying, hey, just, you know, sign up for my email for updated, you know, uh, feedback and tips and things like that, give them something. You can make something really quickly in Canva. You can make a one page PDF in Canva. Let me know below if you're an entrepreneur, if you have an opt-in, just type in um, yes or no. If you have an opt-in or a lead magnet or a freebie that leads your ideal client to your email, just type in yes or no. I just wanna see how many people are doing this. You can make a checklist, you can make a video. You can literally record a video with some tips if you're not good at designing something or writing out a PDF. You can literally hop on a video and say, hey, here are my five tips for XYZ. Or, you know, here's some, um, here's how I do this and do like a tutorial or something. So easy, takes very little of your time and so helpful for ideal clients. So let me look at, I see no's, I see yeses. Crystal, hey girl, Crystal <laughs> said I need one. <laughs> um, yes, so put that on your list for this summer. If you don't have an opt-in, just create something very helpful for your clients that will get them to sign up for your email list and then continue to pour into them with resources and you know weekly bi-weekly monthly advice okay um <laughs> one of the answers is no i don't have it okay put it on your list i promise you once you create it once it'll be so helpful i have a personal branding photography checklist if you want to see an example of an opt-in um, after this um, live, go to my resources page. If you're watching this on Instagram Live, you can click my link in bio. It's just called resources. And I've got like five opt-ins. <laughs> they were so easy and fun to create in Canva. And um, people have given me great feedback and they love the, you know, they love the advice and tips and all that good stuff. So check that out. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do. Our next question is... How many outfits do you suggest for branding photos? So in a typical branding shoot, if you're working on like a three hour, four hour branding shoot, I recommend three to five outfits and to really make sure that they encompass your full brand. So if you, so for me, I'm gonna wear something casual. I think I even wore this in my branding. I took branding photos last week. I think I wore this shirt last week. So um, if you, or like me and have like a casual look some days a very professional look some days switch it up so bring a casual outfit a professional outfit if you're a fitness professional and you're always in yoga pants and a tank top or you know really work with what fits your brand you always want you know something that really that can be used for a headshot so like a nice blouse or a nice dress for a headshot and then a working outfit so like i said if your work is behind a computer you know do you work in your pjs do you work in comfortable clothing do you work in business professional attire if you work at the beach <laughs> do you wear a bathing suit so do what's relevant to your personal brand and like i said three to five outfits is what i recommend you can even wear like the same bottoms and keep switching out the tops <laughs> i like to switch out earrings um like i said if you're new here I, I i'm going through chemo so i literally have no hair i have a bald head <laughs> so the last time you seen my live i probably had hair right now i'm bald <laughs> so at my Friday branding session with Elizabeth and Chris and Chris and Christina, um, it was different for me. It was different. Usually, I get my hair, you know, nice and curled. You know, um, I put on some cute earrings, and I walked into that branding shoot bald, and I was like, "Okay, what are we gonna do here? This is a different type of branding shoot for me." So I I wore this because this is something that I'm comfortable in. I did a couple photos bald. So you can, if you go to my Instagram profile, you'll see um, I posted a black and white photo that Christina took of me and she edited it in black and white. Oh my gosh, her black and white edits are gorgeous. And um, I was bald. <laughs> it was like my first branding photo that I shared post, you know, chemo and hair loss. And um, I posted a bald branding photo. So like I said, if you wanna be bold, be bold. If you wanna do something different with your hair, 
do it. You have to show up as you. I know people can feel insecure in their skin. Right now, I can admit I, I feel insecure. I've been through surgeries. I've been through chemo. My body is physically, you know, uh, my immune system is compromised right now. Like I literally feel physically unwell most days. Show up as you are. That's how I show up right now. Um, I'm going through some crazy stuff, but I'm still an entrepreneur. I'm still a branding photographer. And I'm going to empower other people to build their businesses. And um, feeling unwell is not going to stop me from doing that. So show up as you. Bring those cute outfits and work it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pause just a second to check the chat, see if I haven't missed anything. Kathy says, do you have a studio? How do you find locations if clients don't have a space? I don't have a studio. I shoot products in my home, but when I'm shooting clients, we'll um, work together to decide where we want to shoot. So if their if their vibe is a coffee shop, we'll pick a coffee shop. If their vibe is their home office or a co working space, we'll shoot there. I've done both. If they are completely clueless and they want just something like fun and unique, you can look up studios in your local area, and um, you know pay by the hour. So I know the next question is, do you pay for your studio shoots? No, my clients pay any locations or like outside services that my clients need, my clients pay for them. But I always give them suggestions. So I have a planning guide that I send to them that helps them pick outfits and locations and props and all that stuff. And one of the pages is about locations and I give them general advice on where we can photograph. So like I said, co-working space, home office, coffee shop, a studio, you know, outside of the beach, a park, a city center, all that. Shameless plug, I do have this planning guide in my shop. <laughs> so if you're an entrepreneur looking for tips on planning your branding shoot, it's there. If you're a photographer and you want to take my planning guide and customize it and make it your own for your clients with your photos, it's also there in the shop as well. AngieMcPherson.com slash shop. So shameless plug <laughs> on that. Okay, uh, let's see what else we've got here for questions. Let's see. I'm gonna pull up some more. Let's see, oh, piggybacking off of that. This question is how do you plan your sessions with your clients before the shoot? A planning guide, any type of guide or, you know, um, you can even have a private link on your website that's got like a customer, um, like a client concierge service that shows them everything they need to know on a site. Just give your client something so that you're not constantly repeating the information you know, so I have a planning guide. It's like 15, 16 pages. Like I said, props, location ideas, outfit ideas, how to build their um, Pinterest inspiration board to help them and to help me. You got to create something for your client. In my early stages, I was constantly going back and email, getting on Zoom calls, and it was taking up a lot of my time. And it just wasn't really the, the best use of time for my client or for myself. So create something for them. Like I said, a PDF, a private link, you know, with your beautiful photos with examples and, you know, some good copy, you can even put suggestions for local hair and makeup artists if you need to send it to your client. And that's what helps me um, to help my clients plan for the shoot. All right. Next question. Do, do, do. What are the hard? Okay, let's see. What was the hardest part about being seen? And then... As a photographer, oh, and I'm sorry, <laughs> what was the hardest part about being seen and then booked as a photographer when you started? I would think the hardest part for me, I transitioned from weddings, so I'm shooting weddings for like seven years before I transitioned into branding photography. I think the hardest part for me being, um, being seen and booked was, you know, people knew me as a wedding photographer. And so they would see my social media feeds, my blogs, my website, all with weddings, wedding, weddings. And once I started to transition into creating content for entrepreneurs, that's when it was easier to be seen and to be booked as a branding photographer. So creating content as far as giving very, very valuable information about branding photography and how it's a return on your investment, how it helps you to build your brand and your aesthetics and your website and social media profiles and you know print you know whatever you're working on you have uh, business cards you're in magazines you're in a guest on a podcast you need photos and you need consistent cohesive photos so once i started to educate about that and switch my profile and my copy and content to branding it was so much easier 
to be seen as the expert in the field. And also, you gotta show up with your own branding photos. If you wanna practice what you preach, you gotta show up with your own branding photos, you know, give them examples, you know, build up your portfolio so that you have examples of different types of entrepreneurs in your portfolio and how those people are using those photos. A great thing to do is when you're photographing someone and they use the photos for a social media post, you know, for a blog feature or wherever they use it to share it and be a cheerleader and say, hey, this is my client. I love how she used this photo, you know, to build awareness about something or to share a new product or service. So if you're looking to be seen as a branding photographer and getting booked, you got to help people. You got to be valuable. You have to give them as much information as possible because you do, when you want them in your inbox, you want them to, to know that they want to book you. You want them to know that they need branding photos, to know that they want to work with you. And it's much easier to be booked as a branding photographer. Great question. All right, let's see any more questions. I'm just gonna scroll up the chat, see if I missed anything to do. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Crystalline, Janelle. You guys are awesome. All right. Ooh, good question. Does it take a different set of skills to color correct black and brown women and men? I love this question because I see so many posts in Facebook groups about people struggling with, you know, being photographed, you know, with darker skin like me, I have darker skin. And for me, I photograph black. I, I can't even think about how to answer this because I, I photograph and I edit just so like seamlessly without any strategy. And I would say when you're photographing black and brown women, do not up, 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 up the exposure. <laughs> I see, I see that a lot um, in Facebook groups of black and brown women complaining and saying, this doesn't look like my skin tone, you know? So think about how you're editing your photos. I totally understand wanting a, a brighter image and I definitely brighten my images as well if they come out dark, you know, in my camera. But you don't, you know, you're in Lightroom, you're in Photoshop, uh, in Photoshop. You don't have to click one thing and it edits the whole photo. You can piece together, you know, your editing in the photo. So if you want to brighten the background of a darker skinned person, that's fine. But don't go in and <laughs> brighten up the face to like 0.5, 1.0, 1.5. seen this complaint. So that's like the number one complaint I see so many times. In, um, in Facebook groups is people complaining that they don't look, their skin tone doesn't look, you know, the same. So um, that is my answer for that. But thank you for asking, that was a good question. Um, any more questions in the chat? I think that's all I have in the queue. So I'm gonna scroll up the chat one more time and see what's going on. Just some reminders, I um, if you're looking for ideas for opt-ins, like I said, I have, you know, some opt-ins on my website, on my resources page. If you are looking for a planning guide as an entrepreneur or a photographer for branding shoots, I have that in my shop. And then I am opening my course enrollment for mastering personal branding photography this summer. So my waitlist is um, angiemcpherson.com slash waitlist. It's in the link in bio if you're watching on Instagram. And I'm excited to get a new group of people into this um, program and help them build their branding photography business, to be honest. My last launch was in February and I found out I was diagnosed with cancer in like week two. <laughs> and I tell you what, it was like my saving grace to have that group and to be able to show up for them for six weeks and really pour into them and see them grow their businesses even though I was struggling with something. So now that I am feeling better, even though I'm going through chemo, I'm feeling much better. And um, I am really looking forward to this this summer and getting those people in there and just building those relationships and you know and businesses and seeing what everybody's doing with their clients uh, i had one more question to come in this says from tracy how to not be nervous when you do your first instagram live it can definitely be nerve-wracking i do them all the time and even you know today when i got on i was a little bit nervous i don't think the nerves ever fully go away but practice 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 you know if you want to talk to the camera before you go live and pull out some notes. You know, if you have some notes to the side, you know, about your topics that you want to talk about, or if someone's already asked you questions, you can put those to the side. Um, and just just practicing. When I, I started doing these a couple years ago, and week by week, I would build confidence. I would, you know, do better at them. You know, I would know what to expect as far as questions. So I would just say to practice, 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 and bring your notes 
bring your energy and just really focus on talking to one person. You know, there's multiple people that could be watching you, but I just think about one person who really needs my help today and how can I talk to them like a friend and a mentor and an educator. So uh, thank you so much, you all, for tuning in. I'm so excited to get back to business after taking a little bit of time off. Thank you for being so sweet and so um, just encouraging through all of this. I really, really appreciate you. And I will talk to you soon. Have a great rest of the week.